Hey you, drop that subnet chart. It's time to go in the lab. Jimmy Ray, we ran out of time on our last show to be able to mm -hmm. talk about power over Ethernet. And as we were planning that one out, you have a bit of a tear in your eyes. You watch that one slide off Dude, of the uh, bummer, slide off the show flow. So we take advantage of whenever we can of a podcast, right? Yep. So here we are. We're in the lab. Thanks for having me in, by the way. Hey, glad to um, have you here, man. Nice digs. Nice digs. We'll have to talk about that later. Absolutely. Um, why, why is this such an important topic right now? So power over Ethernet and, and specifically enhanced power over Ethernet, which is in mm. committee yeah. right now. We're yeah, right. Figuring out Tell right, me about it's it. part. Well, you know, I mean, if, if we uh, let's go to the Wayback Machine and look at AF, you know. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, 802.3 AF is, is obviously the power standard that we're that we're under right, right. now mm -hmm. uh, by the IEEE. It's been approved and it's been there for a while, um, and it's 15.4 uh, watts uh, total. Now, by the time it gets to the end of the 100 meters, it's, it's like 12 watts, but still, 15.4 is a pretty safe thing to say. It was there when it left. Right. Uh, that, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that, but you got to consider too that, that that's that's about a three watt bake off. Um, that we got to account for in that in that this is that cable. So in the end, your net is only 12, but that's not part of the show. Um, let's really get to the cool stuff. Um, you know, the enhanced power, the power, the POE plus, uh, as, as as they're calling it right now, is really the ability to send a lot more juice, um, uh, some more wattage and more milliamps down uh, to another device, so that we can power higher end devices and more functional devices uh, at the other end. Now this is difficult to pull off because there's a lot of different parties that have different interests. We yeah, have yeah. people like ourselves which are interested in powering devices at the other end or sending the power to be able to do that. Actually, we're on multiple parts of this equation. But then you've got heat dissipation issues. You've got distance Tons. limitations. You've got safety and security, you know, probably along the way as well. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So it is difficult. This is why we have committees, right? Very true. Um, so how is it that what, what's, what's being done now and are we close to getting something like this ratified? Is this... Well, we, we, we started working on POE Plus back in 2004. Okay. Um, all the vendors got together and said, look, we need some more juice out there. Um, and initially, we wanted 50 watts. Um, the cabling, 50? 50, 5 zero. Yeah. Um, The cabling manufacturers are like, oh, what are you, freaking stupid or something? I mean, yeah. you're going to have cables, you're going to have oven mitts on to Not actually handle. Not these cables. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, uh, and, and you're going to have, you know, switching causes burst into flames. And, you know, and bad termination can cause some problems. And so okay. 50 watts was, was, was a little optimistic. Uh, I think initially it was spec'd out at 57. I think um, it's good to ask for more than you think you're going to get, though. So like I don't Christmas, think there's anything man. wrong with that principle. You know, it's that sacrificial lamb type yeah. stuff, right? You know, like telling your wife, "Hey, I'm going to go buy a boat," and she says, "No, a motorcycle's cool." You know, um, but exactly. Uh, but so, so we, we, we settled down on, on a good wattage that we liked and something that actually works out pretty good. Um, but you also have to it's also the math that works out to it too. Right now, you're having vendors that can't even power with 15.3 with watts or 15.4 watts. You're having vendors that are complaining because they're having to use 1500 watt power supplies mm -hmm. to 20 volts to to actually do the stuff we're doing now. Now. And now we're wanting to, to double or triple this. People are like, holy smoke, man, we're going to have to have power grids plugged into our switches right. to be able to power this stuff. So there's got to be a better way. And when we went to design this out, we said, look, we need a way to uh, trim back this power to make it green okay. so that just because that somebody gets, uh, you know, 25.5 watts of power, if they don't need that, we need a way to trim that back. We need it. It has to be backward compatible. You know, the AF stuff must oh, yeah. still work. Uh, on that same stuff. We can't do that. We have to have a way of detecting the AF gear and being absolutely positively sure that that is not AT, um, that that is not the higher end stuff, so we don't send it 25 watts and, 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 and yeah, and, and, and totally bake it out. This is pretty cool. Let me show you how this works, too. On the detection method, um, as we're doing this, as a plug-in device, now what happened on the AF stuff is that it, 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 it you had a trickle current um, that uh, detected a 25k ohm resistor in the, at the power device at the other end, the PD. Mm -hmm. the, you have the PSE, which is the switch, uh, the power sourcing equipment. Right. The PD is the device, what's being powered. The, the, the PSE sent that trickle current out. It detected that 25k ohm resistor. And once it detected that, it it um, okay then boom, it shot okay. some juice. So now we're going to use a, a method here where we're sending that trickle current. We're starting to ramp up, and we get into signature detection phase. We need an absolute positive way to, to detect this. And so what we do is once we detect that that's a power device, a PD, then we send it, uh, you know, full power to actually see if it see if it'll hit it. We know it's it's at least AF, so we can send it AF power. Okay. And that's not going to hurt anything. Once it detects it. Then it says, okay, I got this. It'll clip it, and then it'll drop it down here to, to 6 volts um, if it is a AT, a higher-end device. And so the device say, okay, just to make sure, let me send you 
AF power one okay. more time. Test it again. Once it right. detects that, again, it'll clip it. It'll drop it back down uh, to six, and then it'll say that is uh, what we need. Uh, that's a, that is an AT device. Go ahead and send it 25 watts. If it never drops that off, it says that's an AF device. If it never hits this point, erase this out, and it just kind of goes straight, uh -huh. then we know, oh, that, that's an AF device. Send it 15 watts, and then let's use the enhancements. Because just because it's AF doesn't mean we still don't have any enhancements that go with it that allow us to actually adjust. So really, much more, and, and I'm, I'm stealing this term. I don't know if this is our official term. Rob Sloan's telling me this is the intelligent power management. Yeah, I mean, this is the idea. It really is. But also, I see the benefits from this because one, you're not sending any more than it needs, right? Right. right. Because also, there's an issue he was telling me about the fact that even switches today can't handle all these. Switch no, power. Uh -uh. All the power can't be supported all at once. No. And eventually, that's going to become an issue because that becomes uh, how do you design to that? Right? Well, now, so you know, as a designer, we've got a couple things that we can do. Um, uh, we can we can look at um, uh, how we can actually trim this power back um, for a more greener environment, so we can actually have less heat, um, and that we can use that power other places. If I got a six watt device, I don't need to send it fifteen watts mm -hmm. and have it bake off. Uh, you know, the other nine watts. That's just that's just silly. That's just silly power management. Right. Um, so now, what I can do is. I can design uh, based upon, uh, you can see I took my time writing this out. Um, there yeah. are five class That's levels. That's the good here. handwriting you were That's saying. the really good okay. handwriting, yeah. And, and I can bake that off. And you can see um, the, the, the top four levels, um, these are all uh, AF. Okay. These yep. are all AF levels. And so I'm adjusting my voltage and my amperage over here. That, that's milliamps. Um, I'm adjusting my voltage and my amps to actually show how much I, of, this, uh, of this I actually want to send across this wire, this wire, what class of device it is, so I can trim this back and be able to reutilize that stuff. So I've got a phone. So now I've got a, a feature called AT Detect. Uh, and I say uh, that, okay, now on AT Detect, I can tell that this is a, uh, a, a, an, AT, an AT device. Mm -hmm. And I can send it power. But now I can say, okay, now that I can send it power, um, I can say that this device at idle only needs 6 watts. But at full, at full start time, it's going to need... Oh, no, that's uh, very interesting. Well, like a night vision camera. So it's right? the status of the device itself exactly. is going to change over time as well. So why be sloppy about what we're sending it? Well, what, what, what's the big deal? If, if, if I've got a camera sitting there, a PTZ camera, um, that's sitting there and it's not really moving, it's just sitting there and it goes into idle, and it's just sitting there until it detects motion or whatever, yeah. then it needs all that power, I can instantaneously switch that, bring that power up. It's very cool. But, now, but, but be aware now, dun, there's dun, dun, a dun, side point. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay. The, the, the catch of this is there's two detect methods that are supported, um, and it's supported in the PD, in the power device, in any device you buy. If it's a, like a camera over there, it's a phone, if it's whatever, it's a, if it's a, a powered device, i got to look and see what detection method it supports. It has to support uh, uh, hardware uh, and software. And which one of these am I going to use? Hardware stuff, instantaneous. I got all those great benefits I talked about. Right. Lightning fast, milliseconds. Um, that whole process happens so quick. If it's software, software I'm using LLDP to detect that and determine my levels. And then you're looking at about 20 seconds uh, to detect this. So what happens? It's way too long for us users. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. So I have users creating a denial, denial service attacks going, well, it's not, it's not yeah. working. It's not working. Right. And they're plugging them in. They're plugging them in. They're plugging them in. And they're, ca they're, causing, all, they're causing all these restart states. Uh, on the network, and it's okay. causing a little, you know, voltage denial service. All right, before we run out of time, so what's the status as of today? This is not ratified. No, not yet. But how locked in are we? I mean, are we, because you don't like to talk about futures. You must be feeling no, pretty I positive. You, you participate in the committee at certain levels, from what mm -hmm. I understand. Yep, that's right. This is going to stay. Cisco customers, what's our story there? So here's the deal. We're supporting PoE Plus uh, on our devices. It's kind of the, it's kind of first verse the same as the second, or second verse same as the first. Okay. Something like that. Um, uh, what we're saying is just like on the AF stuff. Before AF became ratified, we supported pre-standard AF. Uh, right. where We had phantom power. We did that. Uh, people that went to it, that was great. Uh, then when AF came out, we supported both. Mm -hmm. Both devices supported it, and, and life was good. Now we're seeing people that really, they, customers are asking for it. We don't do it because we say, hey, you know what? Let's waste time developing these resources here and plugging this stuff in the device because we don't have nothing else to do. We design this stuff because people are really wanting this. Our customers are asking. Customers demand it. Exactly. So right. what we do is we, we, we designed it for the pre-standard stuff. Mm -hmm. The standard's supposed to be ratified the second half of this year. Okay. Um, but right now we're supporting pre-standard. Once, once the AT stuff gets approved, boom, we rolled our products, and there you go. Spring and bug. just like 802.11n, which is one of the big players in this type big of thing, and all the power we, get out of it, we, were, we were consistent on that one. Yep. That ratification stayed true. We should be in good shape. Everything's looking the same way for this so as our well. Our track record is solid, man. Our track record right. is solid on support pre-standard to standard. You're right. You know, we never would have fit this in the other show. No way, man. Would have not done justice. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Thanks, buddy. Good, good podcast. You,